a very, very good idea to teach people how to um, have good habits, um, well, to make good and intelligent uh, choices. We've just been advocating a lot about the food pyramid, about the new food pyramid that they established this year. A lot of people still don't know what it's about, so all we're doing is educating them and letting them know about each group and the strivings about each group. Also letting them know that those should reduce this risk of diabetes and cardiovascular disease. We have a small pamphlet that we can give out to people who are interested in wanting not just to better themselves, but for example, this lady came in, she said that her co-worker smokes, like how it not only affects her, but her kids and the people around her. With smoking, it does affect the heart and every single body part of your body. It's not just the lung, it affects the eye, the brain, your throat. I've been a liaison between the health science department at San Jose State University and with the health trust of Santa Clara County and we've been working on, on collaborative projects between the two and primarily at this point we've been doing the health affair and trying to get the health science 104 class to put together great educational modules you know within the context of Santa Clara County and the health trust to educate people about all kinds of health issues from smoking to blood pressure to um, nutrition to being a more um, informed consumer when at grocery stores. What we've noticed once we arrive though is that most of the population speaks in Spanish so we had to do translation on the spot with both of our games. We have a Jeopardy game that consists of five different categories, uh, complications, risk factors, uh, symptoms, and um, prevention, and general fun facts about diabetes and cardiovascular disease. techniques on how to do more exercise as well as um, different ways people can get more motivated. Our main target is from all ages. We did uh, brochures that can be translated in Spanish as well as in English. And this is just to make um, people that are mostly targeted communities aware of how important exercise is and how it impacts their lives. We want to tell people and make them aware of um, the healthy food that they can eat, the nutritious stuff that they can eat. And we are giving out some recipes so that people can learn how to cook healthy food fun doing this. It's great experience helping people make changes toward their health. So that's what's important to me. We're trying to inform the community about blood pressure, what the numbers represent, what they mean, the difference between systolic and diastolic, and we're also trying to um, inform the Viet Vietnamese community and the Latino community. This health fair is a good way to get everyone to become healthy and to prevent certain diseases out in the Santa Clara community. I love teaching community health promotion. Integrating the health fair into my class has been one of the best things that could happen to me. When I get to see the students that I've been working with for six weeks out in the community with the exhibits and displays that they've created, with the things that they know will make sense to people of their community, I get a whole new appreciation for the young people that I have the pleasure of working with. So it's a really cool thing, like up and out the community. Our plan today is basically to map the surrounding area around San Jose High with about six students. And we have the technology here to map out this entire area. Basically the idea is to engage the students. This is their first opportunity getting to uh, see the technology and how it works with the environment. So the idea is to kind of incorporate this new technology and also the walkability checklist with the surrounding area. The community mapping experience was a really good way to go out into the community and learn about protective factors and risk factors in the neighborhoods. Um, we were able to see if neighborhoods were walkable for people of all ages. Was it safe? Was it something that people could go out and get further exercise by walking in their neighborhoods? We looked for health hazards that were on sidewalks, street corners, in the gutters, anything that we could find that could possibly you know, harm people living in the community. Within the small area that our group mapped, there was a big difference in, in the way the sidewalks were put together and the way the, the neighborhood itself looked like it felt. Hopefully we could uh, contribute to the community, help make it a better place for everyone that lived there. The city will be able to take the information that we find during our surveys 
and be able to fix some of the problems within the community and make it a healthier community. We learn some of the reasons why a community might not be too healthy. They might not have access to fresh fruits and vegetables. You know, maybe people are not walking because they don't have, they don't feel their sidewalk is safe. It helps both the students gain experience out in the field and it also helps the health trust gather data that can in the future lead them to projects that can improve the community. Dr. Rowe really brings people to the actual community health promotion aspect of it. You're not just in the classroom reading from a textbook about community health promotion. You're actually in the community doing different things, whether it's the health fair or the community mapping project. Um, it really gives you a sense of what community health promotion is and different ways you can use your education once you leave here as community health educators. People in our field are dreamers and activists. We are empirically oriented and we do things. We are empirically oriented, we are unafraid, we are problem solvers, and we understand the process.